from that. Hmm. So here's a question. What makes Animal Crossing so good? Seriously, I can still remember playing this game for the first time on a tacky silver GameCube. My older brother brought the tiny disc home from GameStop having paid a whopping $50 for the brand new game. Times were simpler back then. To a young, uncultured so good, the game looked babyish and girly. I made fun of him for about the first 20 minutes that I saw him playing the game. That is until he dug up his first fossil. You see, Baby So Good loved dinosaurs. And from that moment forward, I was hooked. I play these games every day after school for the next couple of years, and it still seems odd to me. I mean, as a kid and still to this day, I find these games unfathomably addicting. But, I mean, it's a game about paying bills, acquiring debt, running errands, catching bugs, Digging through your local community garbage and talking to people? Why would I enjoy a game that simulates the aspects of life that I don't like? Hell, I'm not even really a huge fan of other living slash social simulators like The Sims. And yet, here I continually find myself loving these games and going back to them at each new release. Whether they be the original GameCube game, to newer versions on the DS, to even the mobile application, which is actually a great game that receives a disturbing amount of content-rich updates almost weekly. So what is it that makes Animal Crossing so consistently fun? At least when they stick to their traditional game formula, but we don't really talk about these. Well, that all boils down to you. See, Animal Crossing is a game that above almost all else promotes a sense of freedom in the player, especially as the games have progressed and new features have been added. The game aims to take some of the best and most challenging aspects of normal life and makes them attainable, but not so attainable that the player misses out on the almost unparalleled endorphin rushing high that is felt when you finally manage to pay off your house. The games can be played hundreds of different ways, and the goals can be accomplished through various different means. So much so that there really is no way to play these games. Hence, you have the freedom to decide exactly how you want things to go, and the way you want to reach the goals that you set for yourself. Want to pay off your house and make it bigger? Hunt for floating balloons carrying treasures from faraway lands, catch valuable fish, or root around through the neighborhood garbage for old furniture that can be resold. Or maybe you just want to be the best mayor possible. Build your citizens fountains, make handcrafted parks filled with lush fruit-bearing trees, and build clubs, museums, and shopping centers for all of your town's citizens. Maybe you're a collector of anything Nintendo. Well, Animal Crossing also happens to be arguably the second biggest crossover game in Nintendo's history, second only to Super Smash Bros with the player being able to find, display, or wear various bits and baubles from throughout the Nintendoverse, not to mention the dozens of Nintendo Easter eggs. Or perhaps you just want to see the world burn, chopping down trees, planting weeds, and burying your neighbors alive with pitfalls. Either way, you can play this game just the way you like, the options are nearly endless. And look, admittedly, virtually the same thing could be said for the aforementioned simulator games. However, where Animal Crossing and the other life simulators share their biggest difference lies in the realm of style, which is often the focal point of my videos. See, it's no secret at this point that the best stories, games, and works of art usually all have distinctive style. And this is often the biggest and most distinguishing feature, separating the things we love and remember versus the things that end up fading away after a couple years. Just one look at Animal Crossing reveals a visual style that really has never been matched. I mean, just based off looks alone, I'd say Animal Crossing is probably one of the most unique, adorable, and expressive games on the market. Its signature chibi style of animating and expressing the characters and NPCs is charming to say the least, what with every character having very distinct personalities, likes, dislikes, and preferences. 
and the fact that every NPC in the world besides you is a uniquely stylized animal, well, it makes things bizarre. In a good way. And of course, we can't talk about Animal Crossing's style without discussing the incredible sound design. The creators behind these titles have not been shy in admitting just how much work they put into getting just the right sounds for every little bit of the games. From the soft and satisfying scrunch of fresh snow underfoot, to the sound a villager makes when they put something in their reality-defying pockets. Animal Crossing was doing ASMR before it became the disturbingly worldwide phenomenon it is today. And who could forget the game franchise's notably brilliant feature of giving each character their own unique mumbling voice. This small feature is honestly one of the things I feel like too many people gloss over when discussing these games, as the Charlie Brown-esque language in Animal Crossing allows NPCs to add flavorful bits of personality beyond just the mannerisms and emotions that they can express. It's little details like this that show a dedication to stylized audio design that make these games shine just a bit brighter. But let's be honest, you can't talk about sound design without talking about Animal Crossing's phenomenal soundtrack. I mean, it's a Nintendo game after all. And I think Nintendo does soundtracks better than anyone else in the gaming industry. Soft, relaxing tunes overlay a wonderfully vibrant world filled with life and its many different faces. From rainy day tracks, to sunny summer mornings, to just overall good vibes. These tracks are nostalgic gold, yes, but above that, they're just plain catchy. And while the general instrumental tunes provided throughout the game are a splendor for ears to behold, well, Animal Crossing's use of music doesn't simply exist to provide lovely audio filler in the overworld but also to continue Animal Crossing's trend of characterizing the world through thoughtful and simple means. Maybe it's K.K. Slider stopping into town to perform a concert barking out his iconic tunes, or maybe it's Cap'n belting out his sailor's ballads as he sails you to a faraway island. Whatever the occasion, if you're playing Animal Crossing, you can bet there will be a catchy, simple tune to accompany it. Animal Crossing's stylized approach to reality simulation is just what the franchise needed to set itself apart from the competition. And Nintendo's dedication to adding new features to every game makes each New Horizon feel like a fresh start. But we simply can't end our discussion on style without first talking about Animal Crossing's style of gameplay, which is one that takes the conventional style of life simulation and spins it on its head. See, the game is essentially a series of seamlessly integrated mini-games including home building, and rather than tell a player to pick a job for their virtual avatar, Animal Crossing encourages players to grind various odd jobs for cash. Instead of getting a job and watching the virtual simulation of your avatar doing that job like in The Sims, players will be able to explore under every rock, inside every balloon, and behind every dumpster for various bits of hidden treasure or goodies. Behind every nook and cranny, if you will. This freedom to do and make money as one pleases isn't lost on the player, or at least it wasn't lost on me as an ADHD-ridden kid who wanted to plant trees and be a farmer one day, and be an archaeologist the next. This freedom meshes extremely well with the integration and heavy emphasis on personalizing non-player characters. Interacting with them makes the world seem alive, like things go on even without you being there, which they do. Leave your game for long enough and weeds and cockroaches will run rampant across town. Fruits will rot, villagers pack up and move. It's almost like Katsuya Iguchi set out to create his own Animal Crossing multiverse, where gameplay options, free acting NPCs, and randomly occurring events ensured that no two playthroughs would ever be the same. What's more is that the game takes easter eggs and laces them throughout all aspects of the games. This thrills players when they come across things as simple as a rock that gives you bells every time you hit it. To Captain talking about Samus while he takes you to Faraway Island. It's little easter eggs like this that really thrill the player and delight them when they come across them. I can still remember being a kid and telling Rossetti that he sucks and him having unique dialogue to tell me that I suck back. I was blown away, and I thought there was no way that somebody could have programmed such a response into a game. But they did, 
because they had the foresight to understand that little easter eggs like this just enhanced the gameplay that much. Yes, I'm starting to understand now. This game is so good because the people who worked and continue to work on it feel inspired to build a game that stands on its own two feet, with content that could keep generation after generation of gamers playing and having fun. Animal Crossing's unique style of gameplay, aesthetics, and character focus make this game a truly gorgeous gem. And with the newest rendition of Animal Crossing coming out soon, in the form of Animal Crossing New Horizons for the Nintendo Switch, well, I figured it would be a good time to talk about why so many people, myself included, love these games. Anyways, that was my piece, and believe it or not, it's actually pretty hard to articulate just why some of the best stories and games are so good. I mean, it's what I do and I love it, but there's no doubt in my mind that I missed something that someone out there loves about these games. So go ahead and drop a comment down below with your thoughts on this franchise, and don't be afraid to suggest my next video. I am always open to your thoughts. After all, I love engaging with fellow lovers of good stuff, and as long as we can keep things civil, well, what's not to love? Alright, with that, I'll be signing off as Captain So Good, reminding you once again to go out there and keep on loving good stuff.